Hey Logical listeners, thank you for visiting my channel. For those of you who don't know if this is your first time or if this is the first time you're seeing a video since you've subscribed to my channel, hi, I'm Luciano. It's very nice to meet you. And in today's video, which is being filmed and uploaded on Darwin's Day, I want to talk about the impact that Young Earth creationism had on my life. Because for a while, I was a Young Earth creationist. I'm not going to assume that my experiences are universal, and I'm not going to imply that they are, or that they're even necessarily common, but I am going to talk about how Young Earth creationism served as a gateway into other, more dangerous beliefs. Because at the end of the day, when you are a young person, which I was when I became a Young Earth creationist, you not believing in evolution doesn't have a very significant impact. You believing that the Earth is young doesn't have a very significant impact on anyone, but you having other more dangerous beliefs, like you being homophobic, for instance, or you being against abortion, both of which I was as a consequence of the other beliefs that I learned at the same time as I was learning Young Earth Creationism, those beliefs are dangerous, and those beliefs have an impact on the lives of other young people. When I was younger, I lived in Columbia, and after I lived in Columbia, I moved to North Carolina. I moved to a community in North Carolina that didn't have very good public schools, or at the very least, my family didn't believe they had very good public schools, and I was put in a conservative Christian school. I was in the sixth grade, and I would be in that school until the end of the seventh grade. I would go to a public middle school in eighth grade, and then in ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth grade, I'd be in different schools, some of which were public, one of which was private. And I first learned about Young Earth Creationism, although I don't know if I knew those exact terms, but I learned about a young earth and the idea of the young earth, as well as the idea of God creating all life more or less as is now. So a worldview without evolution and without the old earth when I was in the sixth grade. I learned more about it, but only a little bit more in the seventh grade. But those beliefs stuck with me until I was a freshman in college. Now, I would lose some of them, like homophobia and like anti-abortion views, towards the end of my high school experience, but the reality is that other beliefs stuck with me for a long time, including lingering past the moments in which I deconverted. And the reality is there are other people for whom young earth creationism serves as a gateway belief into other more dangerous parts of things like Christian fundamentalism and biblical literalism. And those are dangerous, and it's worth acknowledging that. That's part of the reason why it is that days like Darwin's Day are so important, and that we celebrate the continued teaching of evolution in public schools, and that we fight back against the idea of young earth creationism being a viable competitor that deserves to be in the science classroom. It barely even deserves to be in classrooms teaching about religion, much less about science. Young Earth creationism doesn't exist in a vacuum. It didn't in my life, and for many other people who learned it, it won't. And for people who are going to learn it in the future, it won't either. The ways that Young Earth creationism is taught, at the very least in some settings, is coupled with other beliefs, including conspiracy-like beliefs that suggest that the people who are trying to block Young Earth creationism from being taught in public schools are the same people who are trying to let people know that it's okay to be LGBTQ, which definitely can be the case, but when you are in an environment like the environment in which many people learn about and are taught to believe in Young Earth creationism, that is said as if it's a negative thing. And those sorts of people are said to be the villains. They're said to be leading people down a dark path. And it's important that people who are dedicated to teaching people actual science and science classrooms understand that that's the sort of stuff that they're going up against. And oftentimes, it's difficult for people who are outside of those settings to realize that. Because the people who are in those sorts of settings, the people who are teaching people about young earth creationism and teaching people to believe it, are not going to be super public about what it is that they're teaching. They're not often going to be upfront about what it is that they want, especially because many of the people who are trying to do this are not people who have high-profile organizations like Answers in Genesis and other Young Earth creation ministries. 
Young Earth creationism affected me and other queer folks who were forced to learn it because it was taught to some of us in ways that was coupled with things like homophobia and self-hatred. And that was part of what kept me in the closet for so long. For those of you who don't know, I'm demisexual, which is part of the asexual spectrum. And I often refer to myself as asexual just for the sake of saving time and an explanation. But for many years, I questioned my inability to experience sexual attraction, at the very least to the overwhelming majority of people that I was in a relationship with that I was supposed to socially be sexually attracted to, I questioned why I couldn't experience sexual attraction to them, and I wondered if I was gay. But as a Christian, as a young earth creationist, those things were unacceptable to me, and they made me struggle internally. It would take me years even after I became an atheist, for me to realize that I was on the asexual spectrum. And that is definitely part of it. I'm not going to say that that experience is super common. I'm not going to say that that is the experience of all LGBT X young earth creationists. But at the very least, it's my experience. And I know, after thinking about it for a long time, that a whole bunch of different things, including and especially beliefs like young earth creationism and the sort of light biblical fundamentalism and literalism that I was taught, had an impact on this. And it's unfortunate, because not only did I have to struggle with myself, I also struggled with accepting others. And I'm not going to say that that is everyone's experience, because that would be unfair and ridiculous, but it was my experience. And for me, that would become a heartbreaking reality when I realized just how bad that was. I don't want other people to have to go through the experiences and the problems of learning these sorts of dangerous beliefs and then having to unlearn them. And that's part of the reason why it is that I so eagerly support Darwin's Day. I've been talking about this for a while now online, but I am going to start, over the course of the next couple of weeks, setting up interviews with other atheists and secular folks who went to religious private schools and talking about what they learned, uh, how, if ever, they unlearned the things that they learned, and what their opinions are now on those sorts of schools. I want to get a wide range of folks. I want to get not just Hispanic and Latino, Latina, Latinx folks, but also people from a whole bunch of different backgrounds, people from different countries, and most definitely people from other religions. At some point, I'm going to do a solo live stream where I talk about my experiences in the private school that I went to, and if you're really curious, you can dig through some of my other videos to find out more stuff about it, but it was a conservative, at the very least at that time, private Christian school in North Carolina. It was an interesting experience, and I actually really liked it at the time, so much so that when I went to public schools, I actually asked my family if I could go back to that school back when I was still a believer. And that would have definitely been a mistake. I'm very glad that I wasn't able to go back to that school because that school was a toxic environment. And that's not to say that all the people who went there were bad, but at the very least, the teachers who had the most influence on me personally were not people who should have been having that level of influence on my life. And they're people whose beliefs infected me and whose beliefs made me a worse person. And I'm not going to say that they are bad people or that they were bad people, but I am going to say that their beliefs were absolutely toxic to other people. And that is true. Their beliefs, at the very least at that time, were not good for people who were outside of their specific belief system and outside of their specific interpretation of their specific belief system. And that's a problem. And I'm happy now that I have left that environment. I'm happy now that I am no longer someone who has that sort of belief system. But it was hard. And that's part of why I'm so grateful for things like evolution being in public schools and for people to be able to learn objective science facts about science that come from science in science classrooms and not religious belief systems posing as science. I hope that everyone has a wonderful Darwin's Day, and I will talk to you soon. I try to upload a video or two every week. I'm definitely getting back into the swing of things. And thank you so much for choosing to make me a part of your day. Let me know what you think and what, if anything, have been your experiences with Young Earth Creationism and with evolution down in the comment section below.